Happy Wednesday, kittens! It is October 12th, 2016, and this is not a podcast episode 168. Welcome, and thank you so much for joining me today, both new and returning viewers. I hope you are enjoying this lovely October day and that you are working on projects that you enjoy. How are you all doing? So I am your host, Amanda. Uh, you can find me as Wit on Ravelry or as So Nitpicky on Instagram and on YouTube. Uh, there are show notes over on the blog at SoNitpicky.net and you can find occasional other blog posts there if you still follow and read blogs. Uh, mostly it's my yardage and stash down tallies, but I did write a real blog post the other day and I do occasionally still put those up. So if you are interested, by all means, go check that out. And I am the dyer for Lamy Toes, which is lamytoeshop.etsy.com. I think I got that all wrapped up this time. Uh, this is my second recording or attempt at recording because my first intro was just so terrible, you guys. I decided to give it another try. Ooh, I've got my feet on the table here where I've got the, uh, the camera set up and it's shaking. So we're going to fix that. Because every time I laugh, it's making the table wiggle. <laughs> Oh, so anyway, guys, hi, how are you? Uh, it's still unseasonably warm here in upstate New York. Um, usually, by this time of the year, we've already had our uh, our foliage peak and all of our leaves are already dropping, and we're just now starting to transition into truly fall-looking leaves. Uh, so that's a good thing for my husband, but it's making me a little sad because I'm ready for the truly chilly weather. Um, today, I think, is the last really warm day we're going to have for a while. So I'm enjoying it for now. Um, got the windows open, and I'm just hanging out in the house and getting ready to podcast. So I thought... Real quick, before we go into crafting content today, we would talk about the Fall into Shawls Knit Along. Uh, if you would like to participate, if you are a shawl knitter or other neck things knitter, um, please go into the Not a Podcast Ravelry group and you will find uh, sticky at the top two threads. There is a chat and information thread and a finished objects thread. Um, you can find anything you need to know there. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to ask me and I will answer them right away. Uh, but make sure that if you are entering for prizes that you are a member of the group and that you do put them in the finished objects thread because I think we still have some stragglers in the chat thread that have not been transferred to finished objects yet and I would hate to see those not count for a prize draw. Um, speaking of the prizes, I keep forgetting to mention these on the podcast so I thought I would do it real quick today and I made sure that one, I have notes, uh, not very good ones, but I do have notes and... Uh, just I made a note to myself to mention it. Uh, prizes. We have a couple of donated prizes this time around. Um, Autumn has graciously donated a pattern of the winner's choosing. I think it's up to seven dollars that is going to be in the prize draw. And the lovely Java Jenny from Kitchen Counter Crafter has donated a $25 gift credit to one of you as a prize. Um, I have a prize in there too and I, I think it's the pattern. I think I have a downloadable pattern up to $10 through Ravelry in there. And if if we get enough participation, and we should because we have almost a full page of participants already, um, I'm going to throw in a yarn prize too. Um, I have some hopefully exciting things coming up with Lammy in the next two to four months, and I'm going to be switching some of my dyeing focus. And so I'm going to have that, and it would be something that would be interesting to shawl knitters too. So anyway, once that comes in, hopefully I will um, get that figured out, and maybe I'll even do something pre-dyed and show it off. So anyway, guys, <laughs> let's just go on into the show today. Um, I'm going to be talking to you guys primarily about Spinzilla. So if you are not interested in Spinzilla, I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about it first. And when I'm done with it, I will then show the two works in progress. I've been kind of working on a little bit, but not much because Spinzilla, as the tagline says, is a monster of a week. And I really did not knit at all during that entire week. I think I might have knit two rows on something while waiting for appointments. So I'm just going to talk about Spinzilla. Oh, and I do also have acquisitions at the end too. So if you like to see pretty stuff, but you don't want to hear about spinning, try fast forwarding. I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to talk a good 10 minutes about this. <laughs> Check after five. I don't know. Anyway, we'll talk about Spinzilla. So Spinzilla is hosted by TNNA, which is the National Needle Arts association, I do believe. Um, it has a $10 entry fee, whether you are spinning as a rogue spinner like I did, which is a solo spinner who has no team, or if you spin on a team. 
Um, as a rogue spinner, I am beholden to no one but myself. So it basically, for me, it's a personal challenge. Um, we'll see how things go. Uh, results for yourself have to be submitted by tomorrow evening, I think at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time, which is my time. So if you guys spun and you haven't re uh, posted up your results yet to uh, Spinzilla, make sure you do that so that you get credit. Um, and then they're going to post the final results for how everyone did on Monday. So I am super excited to see how things went on Monday. Also, because I spun more than a mile, I'm going to be watching to see if maybe I won a prize this time around. I'm not expecting anything, but you never know. Um, anyway, uh, the money that they raise goes towards their, um, I think it's teaching programs is what they use it for. Uh, they use it to try to spread love of fiber arts to other people. So the money goes to a good cause. And quite honestly, the $10 entry fee is a bargain for how much it had inspired me to spin out of my stash. It is probably the best $10 I have spent in a long time. So if you followed me on Instagram, you got to see my progress every single day because every day I was really good about putting up a collage of what I was working on, what day of Spinzilla it was, and posting it up usually in the morning of the following day. And I took all of those photos and they're actually in the blog post that I did on the, um, when I had mentioned it in the intro that I have a blog. Um, I did a post about it and I put all those up, including a photo of the finished yarns before their bath. They've had a bath since, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. So this time I started off, I think, really well. I made sure to prep my first spin, which was a big spin. It was about a pound and it ended up being bigger than that. Um, but it was going to be about a pound. And so I stripped it out and had it all ready to go, split into two so that I could do two separate bobbins because they were going to be big bobbins. I now have a Hansen mini spinner and the standard size bobbin can hold up to eight ounces. I have found with plied yarn that is not the case, but with singles it holds, yeah, just about eight ounces of singles on the nose, um, depending on uh, the fiber and how floofy they get and stuff. So I had it all ready to go. It ended up working out pretty well for me. I wish I had been a little bit more strategic in how I um, spun up my yarn. I was very... Um, random and actually randomness when you're trying not to accidentally grab all three pieces of the same fiber at the same time ends up taking a little bit more thought so I think I could have saved myself a tiny bit of time maybe not a tiny bit but a, a small amount of time on that end had I uh, planned that out a little bit better I did end up getting through that spin uh, and then I discovered I needed a lot more singles because despite the fact that it was split pretty evenly, um, one bobbin had significantly more than the other. I spun up an additional, I think, ounce and a half. And that ended up being just about right. And I ended up with just about one yard of um, singles on one of my bobbins, which that's about as perfect as that gets for a two bobbin split. So why don't we talk about that one first? That one was pulled from my five Hello Yarn patchwork kits. I pulled all sorts of fiber that were in the same color families. I made sure to pull all ones with aqua and kind of that berry fuchsia color she likes to use and a little bit of scummy greens and golds and some browns. And this is what I've got. They are so puffy, you guys. Haha, <laughs> look at those. Uh, they ended up being beautiful and you can see how beautiful and puffy they are. Um, this is going to be for a sewer bee shawl by Annika and I cannot remember Annika's last name. I talked about it in the last episode and I linked it. Um, I am doing this as a spin along and then knit along with Laura of the corner of knit and tea. I'm gonna put these other two over here and just talk about one for now but this got super puffy you guys and because we're on my camera it's not going to autofocus or anything it's just the focus is what it is, so I'm going to try to show this off in ways that you can see. Um, it ended up being, all of these are very consistently a worsted or an Aran weight. Um, one skein is slightly heavier than the other two. The other two, when I was calculating yardage per ounce, were pretty in line with like Cascade 220. So they're in that very worsted range, which is what the pattern calls for, which is perfect. Um, there ended up being 16.8 ounces of the spin three skeins. The lightest one was 5.3 ounces. The heaviest one is 5.7 or 5.8. And the other one is almost the exact same size. So these are just right on the money. I'm excited to get these knit up. I'm going to try to get a little bit more done this week because I think Laura's holding off on starting hers until after Rhinebeck 
And those of you going to Rhinebeck, have a good time. I'm going to try to go next year. I can't make it this year, though. And so I'm going to try to finish up a couple things through this weekend when everybody is Rhinebecking. Uh, make sure to share pictures, guys, and tell me all about it. <laughs> so anyway, this is going to be a super stripy, really pretty large wrap. And I think the garter stitch and the construction of Sowerby is going to... I would never want to know if I should call it Sowerby or Sowerby. Um, <laughs> uh, is going to show this off really, really well. So anyway, I mean, just look, they're just, they're squishy and they're big and they're delightful. And for being only my second spin on my new spinner, I'm really happy with how these came out. Um, it was a little bit of a challenge because most of these fibers are more spongy and are poofier. So I think they're things like Targhee and Rambouillet and um, Merino, but a couple of them were stuff that wanted to draft a lot thinner. And so I had difficulty going fast and keeping these consistent because uh, going through so many different mystery fibers is a little difficult and tricky. But I think I did okay. Um, this spin ended up, like I said, coming in at 16.8 ounces and it was 1,000 and I think 70 some yards, over 75, but not quite 80. So yeah, you see one of these skeins is just a little bit darker. Some of these have a little bit more light in them, but they're all huge. They're like, these are massive skeins of yarn, you guys. <laughs> they're going to be fun to cake. They're going to be monster cakes of yarn and going to be a lot of fun to use. So I'm looking forward to using that, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and then my other spin, which I had time for, those took me days one through five I think was when I finished that and so on the night of day five I got this spin ready now this one is very different um it's still the, it's actually a heavier weight than those ones which I would not have guessed based on how I thought I was uh spinning it turns out I was spinning much thicker than I thought but on the final two days I spun a new sock yarn for my husband I was aiming for a heavy sport weight DK weight. Um, this is definitely Aaron going into, I can never remember if it's bulky or chunky after Aaron weight, but it's um, a little bit heavier than those. So this was mostly, and I think I forgot the I forgot the tag for it. This was mostly a four ounce braid of gnome spun fibers. It was a Perindale fiber and actually it was I think it was a Rhinebeck acquisition from when I went two years ago. Um, I got it when I went to the booth that had Bags by Jessaloo, Holiday Yarns was in there, and Gnome Spun also had some fiber in there. And I bought it that. It was a colorway called Waterfall, and it was mostly, sorry, there's like little vegetable matter in this. <laughs> it's uh, distracting me. Um, it was mostly uh, um, aquas, uh, kind of a cobalt blue, a warm brown that had just a little bit of kind of a purpley berry undertone to it and uh, then because it was only four ounces and I have discovered that for um, socks for my husband four ounces is just not enough for the height he wants he wants tall socks out of four ounces with his large feet I can get him socks that go a couple inches above his ankle but not too much taller usually so I found two bumps in the one bag I had separated out from all those hello yarn kits I have some that are definitely sock fibers that are in a bag by themselves that say sock on them and then the other four can be shawls or sweaters um, that um, I pulled two bumps that match this sorry I'm having a hard time keeping my train of thought on the track I'm gonna try though and so what I ended up doing is I actually portioned these out I separated them and strategically lined them up before spinning and I did one I did the sets of both of these spins were fractal spins I forgot to mention that both of them were where one ply was longer color runs and then the second ply was shorter bursts of the same color so that they will have a lot of marling and a lot of long color striping in them um, so I ended up setting this one up before I spun each of the halves and then on day six I spun all the singles and then on day seven I applied and I called it good enough. Uh, this ended up being, this one was 5.6 ounces. I was expecting it to be a bit more but it turns out the braid of gnome spun must have been two tenths of an ounce lighter than I thought. Um, usually with a four ounce braid, give or take a tenth of an ounce either way is pretty standard. Every once in a while I run into one that's a couple tenths of an ounce light and this one was. So I had 1.8 ounces of Hello Yarn 3.8 ounces of gnome spun and I got this yarn which 
it's definitely worsted weight. Um, Perindale, I haven't looked it up in my book of fleece yet, but it was very wooly. And I, I think it, it seems to be a much longer um, stapled fiber. Um, because I'm a worsted spinner for the most part and I haven't played with um, woolen spinning, this probably would have benefited from being woolen spun. But overall, it's not terrible. Um, I could definitely not wear this on my skin, but my husband has pretty tough skin. He doesn't get itchy very easily, um, and especially because it's going on his feet, I think he'll be fine. Um, it's going to make some really good squishy house socks for him soon here. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. This one came in at, I said, 5.6 ounces, and I think it was just over 200 yards. Um, 230 maybe? I can't remember now. But anyway that's what I ended up getting. It's very pretty. I love the colors in it. It's not showing up quite true because my camera, my camera always, always hate turquoise and teals, but uh, you can see that the brown is not truly brown. It's got this very berry, almost purple cast to it. And there are some spots where when it drafted thinner, it's kind of a grayish purple that kind of reminds me a little bit of like Madeline Tosh composition book gray kind of colors if you need something for a point of reference. So overall I'm very happy. I spun 22.6 ounces of fiber. I was just under an ounce and a half away from two, a pound and a half of fiber spun and after um, credit with Spinzilla how it works is you get the credit for the full yardage of the yarn. So like when I get done I would wind it off and I count the yards you get credit for that, but you also get credit for the singles that you spun. So in the case of the two plies, which makes things easy, I take that number and I times it by three, which roughly there should be twice as many singles as there is um, yardage. It's more complicated than that, but I'm not a super technical spinner. I'm not worried about, I think it's wrist is the angle of spin and some other things. I'm not into that kind of stuff. Um, but that can also affect how much yardage is eaten up and Anyway, they keep it simple. So you take it and you multiply it out and do that. So for like a two ply, you times it by three. For a three ply, I would times it by four. Um, I ended up with over 3,800 yards spun up, which was 2.17 miles of yarn. So I did exactly what I wanted to do this year, which is to finish up and uh, double what I did last year. So I'm really, really pleased with that. I mean, I did double almost like right on the nose in terms of ounces of fiber. I think if I had spun about another ounce, I would have doubled what I did last year. And yardage wise, I went above and beyond that. So I'm really happy. Uh, I wish I had had more time to spin. I actually didn't spin as much as I would have liked to. Um, some people were absolute beasts during Spinzilla and I was not one of them. I ended up having to do a lot of errands. Uh, my son had his, um, his one week checkup with his cast, when I, which I think I talked about last time I talked to you guys. I must have. I must have talked to you about that because that was two weeks ago. Uh, he It's set to come off on the 27th, by the way. So it's looking really good. But we had that appointment and then I had to drive him to and from school and his school is like 20 minutes away from here. And when we go to the doctor, it's like 20 minutes the opposite way. <laughs> I lost an entire morning that day getting that done. Um, I just lost lots of minutes and hours here and there from things I had to do. Um, I'm hoping next year, even though my husband will be gone, that hopefully my mother will be able to come and stay. And I think I'm going to try to talk her into staying for the whole month of October so that I can do Spinzilla with somebody else here to help me keep my kids entertained and also to hopefully go to Rhinebeck because I next October is going to be my final October here. And after that, I don't know where I'm going to be and if I'm going to be able to get to Rhinebeck or not. So actually, I need to talk to my friends about what their plans are for next year because I know some of my friends are currently talking about going next year. Kate and all you guys, text me. <laughs> Let me know what's going on. Tweet me. Uh, so anyway, that was Spinzilla. And I'm super happy that gave me a really good boost in my stash down efforts. Um, so let's talk really quick about my knitting and then we'll talk about my acquisitions. Uh, I did not finish anything obviously in the last two weeks. I had one week where I knit and then one week where I didn't knit at all and then today I've knit a few rows. So the first one is the um, Saturn's Rings Shawl by Very Busy Monkey. I'm gonna say right away I did not work on my sweater this week. I'd, either week I didn't touch it. 
uh, I want to focus on this shawl and get it done. And I did make a fair amount of progress. I have um, one of my acquisitions that I'm not going to show you was that I ordered more cables for my Dyak Craft needles finally. And I ordered two 29 inch cables, which will give me a 40 inch needle. And I ordered one custom sized 39 inch cable, which gives me a 50 inch. And that's what the shawl is on now. I just transferred it today. So this shawl, the last time you guys saw it was at the donut stitch marker and since then I have knit the smocking and I have transitioned into this third color of Malabrigo silk packa lace which actually I thought I saw a tag nope I don't have it up here never mind I have the name of the tag but not the fiber content and this is a baby alpaca and silk lace blend um, I am holding it double to get roughly a light fingering weight yarn and I have done a lot of modifications to this shawl um, I'm trying to get it done for eat sleep knit to get a little bit of credit for one of the knit alongs from this year as well as to just use up this stash which I bought on a whim and then didn't knit it up into what I intended to right away and now it's just been sitting there and anyway, it's getting to be pretty large. So we started off with this color, which is called, I think, Simply Taupe. We've transitioned into this um, slightly brighter, orangier pink called Light of Love. And now I've transitioned into this darker, purplier pink called Fuchsia. And uh, as of right now, I think I'm nearing the one third to one half mark on the Fuchsia. Um, on both the taupe and the light of love, I used the exact same amount of yarn, <laughs> uh, about 85% of a skein, 80% of a skein. Um, I'm hoping to use about the same amount of the fuchsia, and then I'm not sure if I'm going to transition into hollyhock or not. Um, I have to admit, I am not enjoying this knit a lot. It's kind of putsy. Um, it's very slippery. It's slow going, and it feels like it's just never going to end. And I'm right now working on the final ring of the shawl as written and I need to decide from there what I want to do and I think if I do keep knitting this shawl I'm going to keep increasing it but I think I'm going to go back to just playing garter <laughs> and then I might do another small eyelet section and then I might do like a pico bind off or something but anyway um I have been switching sorry uh, if you watch my other episodes that talk about this shawl, I've been talking about some of the modifications I've made. Um, I had a hard time doing the elongated right twists, which are supposed to be in between, and this is not what they really look like, but you can get the idea. They're supposed to be these directional twists in between. Everywhere that you see these eyelet rows, I was supposed to have one of those, and I put in eyelet le uh, mesh lace instead. Um, I tried go doing uh, different direction mesh lace, here and it doesn't look like it worked because <laughs> I originally I was doing yarn over knit two together which is a basic mesh lace so I tried a slip slip knit yarn over for up here and I think they look like they're going the same direction so I'm not going to do that again I'm just going to do the yarn over knit two togethers anyway um so far I mean it looks like it's going to be really wearable um as it is this is a 50 inch needle now um it's stretching pretty well over the whole thing. Um, it's almost my wingspan in width. I think if I try to stretch this out, I'm trying not to shove it off my needles. Um, but you know, this is hard to show off you guys. <laughs> it does not want to cooperate and it's getting all twisted and funky. Um, it's yeah, I mean, like if you do like one here to here, it goes to yeah, it's a little less than my wingspan and then in terms of depth it's 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 a good depth so far anyway I figure that if I'm gonna do this I do want to do it right and I want to just commit to getting it done but the rows are a slog I think I have over 330 stitches on the needles at the moment and I don't know in all honesty if I want to go through the rings pattern one more time or if I want to do something else um, I've been kind of just having to fudge each each section as I go because nothing's quite lined up how it's supposed to it's a really simple pattern um, I, I think it comes down to sometimes I just can't count to four <laughs> and I can't keep simple patterns um, on track I do like the smocking section and I think I'm gonna like the ribbed section that I'm doing next so I might actually put in a couple more sections of that but I'm not gonna bother with just the plain garter rows in between the mesh lace panels I think or else maybe I'll elong I don't know I'll make them wider or something anyway I would like to try to focus on this for the next few days and try to get at least the fuchsia done if not into the hollyhock and try to look at getting this finished because I really really want this off the needles I need the yardage out. I want to get the bonus for the eat, sleep, knit stuff. 
and I just I want to be done so hopefully you will see this only one more time I don't know if I'll record next week if I finish this for sure I will um, but yeah so anyway as I mentioned I did not work on my sweater I did however pull out a very long-term work in progress that is going on three years old and I decided that one I'm not gonna make it as big as I originally thought I was going to and two I just want to get that done and out of stash too because I'm kind of sick of having these massive blankets um, lingering in my drawer and I want to get it on my daughter's bed before winter so this is of course sorry the modern log cabin blanket which you can find in the Mason Dixon knitting book um, I found a copy of the pattern for free online but it's missing the knit on mitered border um, so I'm going to need to find the instructions for that or maybe just buy the book uh, it's Barocco vintage worsted it comes in a lot of really good solid colors as you can see I've already deflated this cake quite a bit in the first two nights of knitting I have less than half of this yarn left I'm planning to knock this out of the park um, I am on I think block seven of the blanket out of ten I'm not going to knit all ten blocks I've decided um, originally I started this project to use up the leftovers of my son's blanket and it turns out my daughter really doesn't like the same colors as my son so I've had to buy yarn for it and it's kind of gotten to the point where I don't want to deal with it anymore so I'm trying to finish up the current block which is huge I am two-thirds of the way through probably three-quarters of the way through it now and you can see it's this massive sea of pink <laughs> I mean guys this is a huge blanket this is why I've never really shown it off but um, the rest of the blanket to get an idea is it's 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 a good size already so I think I think we're gonna be good cutting it off where it is um, it's made to be like a log cabin um, quilt where you do a square and then one side of the square and then the top and then the side and then the top and then the side and then the top until you get it to the size you want um, and it's squared up each way um, and then I think it has a knitted on garter miter square or mitered corner thing going on with it once I take it off the needles and I figure out how the edges look um, I might just leave it as is because I don't think the edges look terrible I mean they're not the neatest or maybe I would go through and just do an eye cord or something which seems a lot easier but anyway I don't think it's that bad looking to be honest I think it actually looks pretty good and pretty usable as is um, this is over 2,000 yards worth of yarn so far um, which means it's about 10 skeins so far of Barocco vintage worsted um, I am ready for this to be done. If this makes it until December, it will have spent a whole full three years on needles. Sorry, all of a sudden the ball, the cake of yarn has disappeared. I'm trying to trace <laughs> where it went. Ridiculous. Anyway, uh, so I'm hoping to have that to show off too. When I do actually finish that one, I think I'm just going to take a separate video. I think it's big enough that it'll actually fit across the top of my daughter's bed. It won't be seriously overhanging on any one dimension, but I think it'll be big enough. So where my son's blanket was ridiculously big, my daughter's is going to be, I think, just a tad smaller. Um, I just, I'm in this mood to finish everything up and start clearing things out. Um, now that we have um, an idea of when we're moving, you know, we have a window of time of a couple um, months of when it's going to happen. I'm kind of in the place where I want to get things used up and cleared out and I want to start getting prepared for that. So, guys, that was the crafting content, as sad and small as it was. So let's talk about stuff that came into Stash this week, or the last two weeks. So the first is a gift and a prize from my friend Kate over at the Stitch Addiction Podcast. Um, if you don't watch her, you really should. Kate isn't podcasting quite as much anymore, but she still is putting up episodes. So definitely go watch them because I love hearing about her job at the library too. I think that is the neatest thing. Um, one of the things I wanted to do with my life was to potentially be a librarian and that never quite happened. I, I would even just like to work behind the scenes at a library. You can put me to work. I don't mind. So she sent me a belated birthday gift. And I also happened to win a giveaway on her podcast. So all of it came in one um, package. The giveaway that I won was for a skein of nomadic yarns. Nomadic yarns? <laughs> I can't remember which base this is, but it's her 7525 
um, sock yarn and I can remember I think it's trusty sock there's trusty sock and twisty sock and all these other things but it's the same base that I use for moon pie merino it's 460 some yards um, she does these balls like uh, lollipop yarns did with her self stripings and this is a colorway called Orla and this colorway is a lot of fun um, it is these really fun acid greens these corally peaches navy blue and gray very it's named after Orla Keeley who is the designer of if you've ever seen those really mod flower patterned things um, she has a line at Target if you go back to um, I think they're mostly in the makeup cases now but for a while there was luggage and there was bedding um, and she has all an online shop you can find her things everywhere it's pretty iconic like you would probably recognize it if you saw it um, these are definitely colors that she uses in quite a few of those things. So I'm super excited about this one. I'm going to hopefully start knitting this up pretty soon because I think it would be some really awesome socks. But then the birthday part of my present was also fun. Uh, Kate sent me a skein of hedgehog fiber sock in the Heyday colorway, which I was a little surprised to see this because pictures I've seen of Heyday made it look like it was more pink. And actually it's a cream base with primary and neon colors speckled on it like there's orange and there's lemon yellow um, it looks like there's like a, a darker cobalt blue there's a, a neon purple and then they mix and they make lots of different colors but it's really pretty and this is going to go with the rest of my stash from hedgehog fibers and I'm going to start thinking of projects to knit with all of these because I am getting a pretty healthy sizable little stash now so I'm really excited about that. Uh, and then she sent me, this is from Danica Studio, uh, which is a company out of Sweden. Uh, this is a cellulose cotton, I guess it's a sponge cloth is what it is, but I could not, I don't know how I could use this for cleaning up messes. It's meant to be a sponge alternative and it's machine washable. It says it can be laid flat to dry and it is from their Lama Rama line this really fun little corrugated cloth. Um, I have uh, um, some other things out of this line. I love it to pieces. And I just, I don't know how I could use this to clean up spills though, you guys. Um, I am tempted actually to mount it onto some sort of a backing and turn it into a piece of art because I love the llamas. I love the llamas so much. And uh, yeah, so that is a really cool thing that she sent me. Um, you can find some of this line actually over at nitpicks.com right now. They have some of the bags and I have a pencil case from it. Um, you can find some of those products over there. And then the last thing that was in the package was a coloring book that I do not have yet, which is Franklin Habit's new one. It's called I Dream of Yarn, a knit and crochet coloring book. I don't know if you've seen this yet, but um, there have been a lot of designers starting to put up coloring books like Tula Pink has one that I have cotton and steel released one that I haven't gotten yet um, Franklin Habit has one they're just they're all really fun I think um I have a knitting one from Mason Dixon knitting that Anna Maria Horner's daughter did the artwork for but anyway it's lots of fun stuff there's lots of things like sweater designs lots of cats <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of fun coloring those in knitters and I mean it his the designs are big and they're really whimsical and they're a lot of fun a woman knitting over like a granny square rug just fun stuff a mermaid with yarn um yeah but I love coloring books and I should take more time to color because I think it would be a better a, a dragon knitting that's a pretty cool one too um, I should take more time to color because I think it's a good hobby and uh, I used to love coloring a lot when I was younger and it's something I had done into early adulthood and then gotten out of the habit of once I actually had kids. So thank you Kate for the package. Um, it really made my day to get that earlier last week. And then my final thing that came in is possibly my last Hello Yarn Club Fiber. Um, I have a few more days to decide on this but um, again with Kate. Kate and I were talking and I decided to pull out all of my Hello Yarn fiber stash and I discovered I have a lot more than I realized and I've been thinking for a while that maybe it's time to take a break on the club. 
because I'm not spinning anywhere near fast enough to actually get it used up in a, at a decent rate. And it feels kind of piggish to stay in when I already have so much and there's so many people on the waiting list. And I know that I have enough that if I were to drop off the list and the next time Adrian opens the list up, by the time I got in, I would probably be just about ready to start building my stash up again. Plus she does regular shop updates. But this was, or is, September 2016's Club Colorway. It's Merino Wool Top, which is not my favorite to spin, but I've been hearing people say really good things about this one. And it is called Sinister Things. Now, my braid of Sinister Things is very rainbowy, and I really love the colors in this. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Mine is just rainbow eye candy. Very stereotypical Hello Yarn. A beautiful muted and jewel tone palette. I mean, just look at those colors, guys. Oh. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> um, so if this was my final one, it was a really good way to go out, go, um, out of the club because that is just, oh, the colors on that are fantastic. It makes me wish that I did like spinning merino because this is almost sweater quantity worthy. And this is one that I have seen some other people describe as uh it's spun up more like Polworth than like merino so it is really tempting because i do love Polworth. um and thinking though about pairing it with another club colorway or maybe either some i have some malabrigo nube um either in natural or in a gray color i might pair it with or i've been debating pairing it with another older club colorway on merino called wicker work maybe i don't know but i gotta decide what i'm gonna do with this so I, like I said, I have a few more days to figure that out though. So guys, I think that is basically it. Um, I do have a lot of um, chatty stuff I want to talk about at some point, but I think it's a little early yet for that. Um, I've been giving a lot of thought to my goals for next year. Um, and, you know, we can still argue there's almost a full quarter of 2016 left. So it seems a little silly to act like it's time to talk about 2017 already. But I would also like to get those um, ideas fleshed out a little bit more before I actually talk about them. Because I, I'm going to be changing up, I think, how I do my resolutions and how I've been tracking my stash and everything. Um, I think I need more accountable, no, more, more trackable. I don't even know what word I'm looking for here. I need a better way to be able to track it. And uh, with my stash, I've been doing quarterly. I'm going to go to monthly. And I'm going to have specific goals of how much fiber, a big end of the year goal, and then how much I need to spin every month to get to that goal kind of things going on. That's all I was trying to say. Because that's what I did with my knitting in terms of yardage to knit. And that has worked out really well for me so far. So anyway, I think that's about it. Um, in terms of Lamy Toes, I have some Rebel Girl drying. It's actually just finished drying behind me here. I'm going to be uploading that into the shop maybe tonight, but definitely by tomorrow. Um, and yeah, I think next time I record, I'll talk about Lammy a little bit more. Uh, things are going to be a little quiet with her for the next few weeks because I would like to do a really big upload right after um, the American Thanksgiving holiday next month. So I'm going to be prepping for that, I think. So anyway, guys, I will talk to you in a week or two, depending on what I get done. Bye.